Thomas Lacher, welcome to my uh, YouTube channel. It's really great to have you here. You're one of the yeah, best and also most successful composers nowadays. Tell us a little bit about you. Who are you and what do you do? Well, my name is Thomas Lacher, as you said correctly. <laughs> and um, <coughs> well, I'm composing music. I mean, that's, that's more or less all I do. Yeah, we have been working together yeah. for, for a long time. You've been a great mentor for me as well. And you also come from the piano. So you started as a pianist. What was the first piece you composed and how did playing the piano influence your music? Well, the piano, of course, uh, shaped my life. Um, you know, I, I started playing like you probably with, at the age of five and um, very soon I realized that Mozart was the greatest. Mm. And I thought, um, okay, I will never be able to compose like Mozart, but if I would change one note in one of his pieces, then it still would be quite good and uh, it would be my piece. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how, how my nice idea. first tries. Uh, so, so you actually took I a piece of Mozart? I started cheating at a very, very young age, so to say. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, and, and, but then soon I realized, uh, you know, if I, I'm not very talented in, in transforming my thoughts in, into the fingers, so, uh, meaning I always needed a lot of time to get things right. Mm. And I soon realized that if I wanted to become a concert pianist, then I would really have to practice. And so I just... And what exactly was holding you back in the technique or what do you think was... Um, were, you, were you struggling with? Uh, well, it was my, my non-talent, <laughs> my non-mechanical talent on the one hand, and, but it also was um, a sort of perfection, perfectionism, even that um, I always went further into, the, into details and further and further. Mm -hmm. So that's something which can help you if you're a composer but which can hinder you when you are a performing artist as well. I mean, I realize that here as well now, tonight we're going to perform three pieces by you here in the Elbphilharmonie and you've been with us in the rehearsals and you're very precise and uh, very perfectionist, but in the best way. So you give us as the performing artists also room and space to, um, to explore. Well, I think that's, that's important, you know, because um, a lot of new music, when you play it, you feel like a, ma a machine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but as a human, you're always an imperfect machine. So the feeling is very often that you, you are not content with, with what you do. And on the other hand, you have little opportunity to bring your musicality into the pieces mm -hmm. because they are so strictly organized and, and so, so tight yeah. that you just have to fulfill your, your duty, so to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that leaves you, as a musician, sometimes with an unfulfilled um, taste, let's put it like that. <laughs> to, to say it politely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, but it, situations also ar arise or come up when you are, as a composer yourself, surprised what the players made out of your piece, mm -hmm. so that it goes further even that you, than you had imagined. And which piece was the biggest difference you, you, re, uh, you realized in interpretation? Well, I, I, for, for this program, I can't say that now. Mm. I'm t I was too consumed <coughs> just reacting to the different situations. Yeah. But uh, in general, I think it's, it's, it's simply a, a challenge for, should be a challenge for, for a player to really go behind the pieces to really dive into other worlds and but also to really contribute yourself as a musician as a person to have the opportunity to contribute to mm. all this this is something i would i would like to give the, the players um as a chance because um yeah uh, and that's why i'm not so perfectionistic in the in the rehearsals mm -hmm. because i just also want to see it grow and it something doesn't grow when you always cut it down at the first op first second mm -hmm. possible but when you let things come what would be interesting in this context um, i think is to know when you are in the composing process do you start by 
playing by trying things, or is it more that it's, it's, uh, it's, you hear something, it's in your mind, and then you start putting it into shape? Well, it's, it really de depends. I've, mm -hmm. got some <clears throat> I've got a lot of sketchbooks, books, mm -hmm. and I rediscover old ideas and transform them. Like or, many composers did yes, in the past. Or, or I, I go for a, for a run and hear, hear a certain sound which, which inspires me or... Like in nature, you mean? Yeah, also. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. or, 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 well, you know, I'm, I'm also followed up by, by many... By the music I've, I've played myself ages ago, but it, uh, you know, without any reason, some Schumann sonata comes up, you know, yeah. having not heard Schumann the, the days before or having not read about him or not thought about him. But that this is all sits very deep in my, in my, yeah. behind my head and in my core. And it's actually the, the, the years from the start until something like 25 maybe or, or 30, which shape you completely. Mm -hmm. And so also my, com as, I, as I didn't compose that much in those years, I have the feeling that my, my um, composing is also a, a search for, for a past that uh, in, in reality never was there even. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, I mean, talking about the past, throughout the last decades, I mean, I'm only 27 years old, but I assume that the world has changed a lot with sound. Uh, many places got noisier. We are um, surrounded by sound much more than we were 20 years ago or even, even earlier. Um, how do you think that influences music making and also composing music? Or is there no correlation? Well, I think, you know, since the Industrial Revolution, I, th I suppose it always has been loud. Mm. But uh, the, the, um, it goes, it, nowadays it's loud in restaurants. In the earlier days, probably it was much louder in, on trains than it's today. Yeah. So, but of course, this, this uh, pollution of, of, of noises is, as a whole is increasing. Also that we can access music all the time. Yes, that's, that's um, wonderful and it's horrible at the same <laughs> time. Uh, but um, I don't think it, it, in general, I think that music in the last decades in our Western world has lost <coughs> much of its importance, mm -hmm. even in the arts, because mm -hmm. it's, um, it's reduced to a trigger of some some feelings like a horror or, or, or surprise, you know, in certain situations. It was the in movies? In movies, in advertising, in, 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 in YouTube, movies, in everywhere, mm -hmm. you know. Let's and see what kind of music we can have. Well, in it's reduced, <laughs> well, it's, it, yeah, it's reduced to that through pictures, and because mm -hmm. the pictures have become so dominant, so it's yeah. degraded down it's downgraded it's to a something. background yeah exactly background yeah. thing but for for me when i was young music was was my life and so mm. it was for many many people and that this is part of the of the success of that what we call pop music now and we also see the nostalgia attached to pop music now i mean mm -hmm. look at the at the columns outside or anywhere it says deep purple on tour or, or Rolling Stones, That's old or, stuff. all that yeah. old stuff, mm. and some years ago, CC Top, and, and I don't know, um, Neil Young, and, and everyone, all of the old guys is, is touring. Bob Dylan mm. has been on, on tour for, I don't know how many years, with 100 concerts a year. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, something got lost, I think, and that, that's very sad because this ability to concentrate on hearing and, and mm -hmm. also this immersion into music has become more superficial. I mean, how, how it's for speaking. you personally? Do you watch series or no. TV? No. Nothing, just sound. Well, I watch the Tour de France without so sound. <laughs> and it, it, it's good if you disperse your concentration a little bit and are not so focused and stuck into, into trying to do something 
solve a special problem in composing because sometimes when you look at the screen then and for a minute or so mm -hmm. and come back to the to the paper then suddenly uh, it, it comes by itself you know and the, you the creative process yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or just you know con connecting other things which you, d you are not so aware of yeah many people say there's the first is an input and then uh, doing something active, uh, you do a lot of sports, and yeah. then being silent, and in the silence you have new creative Also, yeah, ideas. yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. And, and how do you see, what, what do you think, how, how will our world develop with music? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no one can foresee the future, but um, or, or what do you wish it, it, it would be in, in uh, 10 years, 20 years? Well, <clears throat> you know, there are always those, those sayings by composers. I mean, um, Schoenberg famously, infamously said that in, in 50 years also his melodies would, would be whistled in the streets. Of course, he was <laughs> wrong. Yeah. And uh, Boulez said, well, you know, the ears are always getting finer and finer and the new generation will be able to hear much more than we did. Well, if you look at the level of, of professional music making, this may be true, but that's such a small segment of our society. I mean, these are only some specialists. I mean, and I have to be honest. And when, they, when they, I, they, yeah. they get way farther, farther from, further, further from, from, from the real reality of, of, of all the people. Yeah. So this con function of music, of connect connecting people is mm -hmm. about to get lost. It's just segmented and, and mm. dispersed to certain social classes, let's put it like this, to yeah. certain circles, to certain specialist things. And you think we have to go back to, to making... Yeah, well, I would dream of a music which is, uh, which again, or maybe first time in ever, fulfills this um, prophecy of, of the worldwide language, you know. Mm -hmm. Because in reality, this has never been. I mean, classical music was a court music, and then the, yeah. uh, the music of the imperialists. And, yeah. and even in the 20th, 21st century, all the other musics existing in the world were just uh, reduced by a, by a cat caterpillar browsing through them and everything mm -hmm. was westernized. And that, that's really uh, not, a, uh, not a great legacy, you yeah. know? And, and uh, that has to do with, with yeah, with, with the British Empire first and then with the Americans just, just uh, throwing this a lot of trash onto the world like, like mad. Mm. So, many people in classical music com complain about wokeness and, and, and all these things and think it doesn't work and so on. And even for me, Beethoven is the greatest, I must say. Mm -hmm. But we should be aware what other kind of music was in the world and still is in the world. Uh, I mean, go and listen to Kay and Kalor or some other Persian musicians. Mm -hmm. You will get a glimpse of, of you can only you cannot really understand it first, but you you get a glimpse of, of what might be behind yeah. behind this this wonderful. I mean, forms when of when music. I listen to your music after the rehearsal, I also have um, it in my mind for a long time. So it's yeah. a good sign, I think, that it's like Let's what Schoenberg so. said. But um, yeah, thank you, thank you for being here. Um, where Welcome. can people find your music if they if they watch now and they are interested? Um, well, I don't know. As, uh, <laughs> you you well, have a website? Well, uh, I have a website, I have a record label, ECM. ECM. And there, are, there is also one record on, on Dine. <coughs> so um, check it out. But I think, <laughs> what, what's this called? Spotify? Spotify, yeah. yeah. Or, or Apple Music. I don't yeah, know. I, guess, I guess we will find it there. Check it out. I've got um, a record, pl record player. And I like the most great. of it. I, I like the cracking. It's great. <laughs> Going back to the old times. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you for watching. Uh, write in the comments uh, what's your favorite uh, piece of contemporary music. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Looking Aaron. forward to the concert tonight. Yeah, thank you very much.